Welcome everybody to Otter Fox Productions' review of Pillars of Eternity. Pillars of Eternity is a role-playing game voiced by characters from Critical Role, which is hosted by Geek and Sundry on Twitch and YouTube. Matt Mercer is the Dungeon Master in Critical Role, and he does two voices of companion characters that you play with. The first one is Alok. Well, I suppose introductions are in order after that little fiasco. Aloth Corvisor, at your service. He also does the voice of Adir, your melee companion. Name's Adair. Though to the people around here, might as well be 19. Liam O'Brien, another uh, voice actor that takes part in Critical Role, does the voice of Hayodin, the caravan merchant. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. Say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale. While Matt Mercer and Liam O'Brien make an appearance in Pillars of Eternity 1, the rest of the cast comes in for Pillars of Eternity 2, Dead Fire. Made a nice story. You fixing up that old keep? Lifting the curse? <laughs> Must have told it a hundred times. But... Something got to gnawing at me. Thinking the spirits there weren't really at rest. That maybe the gods weren't finished with us. And I used to dream that when my god came back, he would forgive us. That's the trouble with dreams. Sooner or later, we all have to wake up. Super excited about that. Uh, anyway, Pillars of Eternity is a role-playing game that uses immersive storytelling and choices that the character makes to forward the story along. Here's some examples. So when I was making my choices playing through the game, I was I decided to make a monk. And because I have a monk, I'm a monk, I don't use weapons, right? So I got a choice that says I am unarmed which allowed me to choose an option that was completely different from what most people would be able to choose. And thus, you know, look, I got nothing to drop, but I have no weapons to drop. What are you going to do? So he decided to injure the guy anyways. But um, it, choices like that allow you to be uh, create your character and craft them in ways you want. Whereas for me, I built my character more around lore and intelligence, so I knew a lot more of the, well, at least my character knew a lot more of the world than I did, um, but it gave me more choices. And so I went with this guy, and I went the theological route, asking, you know, if he, if his god told him not to protect these ruins, would he continue doing it? Um, and he, he kind of stumbled a little bit. I asked him... Uh, if uh, he knew everything himself or if he was being told by someone else. And, you know, he's following the teachings of other people. So it gave enough time for him to stumble and halt, and Hayodin was able to be less injured than Chrono's choice. Uh, so I was actually able to use him as a companion in the upcoming segment after this encounter. It was pretty cool. Um, Especially watching Chrono play through his and seeing the different choices that got made. It really makes the story more intriguing for me and adds to replayability. Hey, Geo here. So I played the big smashy mix mash mash barbarian, and um, as most otters are. And I, of course, came across the same um, bandit leader who slaughtered all of my party that I was with. And I had to make a choice about um, what am I going to do about this? And of course, as a barbarian, I thought to myself, well, um, I don't like people that murder uh, innocent people or unarmed individuals. And he's asking me to unarm myself. And I'm thinking to myself, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so what I did in my idea 
is my character was going to go ahead and just mix match this guy. Uh, and my options, as you can see, we're dealing with athletics and might and not obviously intellect, perception, because let's face it, I have a big smashy thing. That's what I do with it. Um, and that's what I'm going to do with this guy. And I ended up um, going straight for might and saying, look, man, you know, you just kill a whole bunch of innocent people. I'm not impressed. And he's like, hmm, yet. And then uh, we battle and I kill him. And unfortunately, that also means that he kills the potential companion. And I don't get him as an option later on. So um, what makes the game really intriguing is that our different choices, different character design makes the game different for each of us. Mm -hmm. So Pillars of Eternity is a prime example of how voice acting can really add to the game and bring it to life. I meant no offense. Let's put this matter to rest over around, shall we? My treat. Hoping to soothe our pride with a few Adira coppers, eh? We don't need your coin. Go on. Say it again. I'm itching for an excuse. Fie, you're itching for the kindling touch of your sister, you coxfeather! I'll cut that barrel-looking tongue out of your head! And then there are other games that we have reviewed before, such as Secret of Mana, where the voice acting is not as immersive and you? feels kind of forced. Yeah, where are you going? Come back! And what's the sword doing here? What are you doing over there? <laughs> Ack! Too, too bright! bright. <laughs> so that's the difference between voice acting that really helps build the immersion and otherwise. So main point I want to and I enjoyed about the game was the craftability of your character. Obviously, you can see our different uh, character creations, uh, what we decided to choose for our race and uh, kind of the look of our characters. Um, that was. The ability to craft your character, you can choose a small background at the beginning, and then as you play the game, you get a few more choices to then enhance that background and choose whether or not you're going to be the crafty, sarcastic, uh, or hidden in the shadows type. Uh, what's your background? Oh, uh, well, um, I was the guy that turned a few times over. Or you can be more energetic and be like, hey, I'm here to start a new life, and I'm happy to be here and you know, ready to start a new day kind of thing. I'm ready to smash face. Well, smash something. I want to eat your brains. Yeah, see? We all have the opportunity to create something new and exciting. <laughs> and then for me, um, what makes this game a, a real treat is the visual and aesthetics. The soundtrack really adds a flavor and ambiance. The colorations, the darkness, the colors of the, the lamps really makes the world uh, feel three-dimensional and come to life. The voice acting provides just a phenomenal flavor, a treat, if you will, uh, that makes the population feel like they're part of the world and not some static object you press in order to progress the story. Um, for instance, in Secret of Mana, there's an example not of an NPC that was that turned into a corner tomorrow. staring at a wall. And uh, you click on them and it's like, wow, it's a beautiful day outside, isn't it? And like that's all you have to interact with. Versus these characters, when you come across them, they always have something to say about the environment that piques your curiosity and that keeps you going, keeps you moving, keeps you exploring. And this game's all about exploration. As you can see, the map is designed to scroll and move and, and feel like it's a sinuous, uh, seamless transition as you go. And that really provides uh, the immersive part of the world that this game is going for. And I, I really treasure that in the first few hours of gameplay. And then there's this game. And then there's this guy. <laughs> so we're we're potentially dying of a disease. I'll have your water soon enough. Water. Stream's not going anywhere. And his response is, well, I mean, the water's not going anywhere. <laughs> well, gee, thanks there, broski. Um, and then I'm going to walk around with my giant sword and hit things until they die. So that's, uh, that's what my decision was after I heard that. <laughs> For me... Uh, I want to point out that if you've never played a game like this, uh, multi-party based RPGs, this is a very difficult game. I have played games like Dragon Age before, but it's not as micromanaged heavy as this one is. I went through and I made sure I read every single option so that I knew what I was getting into. And I played on normal, and here's a montage of how much I suck. Shit. You died. 
Dead. Got, you, you died again. Dead. Wow. Yeah, one shot. Dead. There again. Yeah, I played the ultimate party. Dead. Dead. He does. Yeah, he died a lot too. Those guys just walking away like a badass right into the sunset with their sunglasses on. I had four party members and four wraiths. I should have been able to kill them. Dead. I got so fed up that I ended up changing the difficulty down to easy, thinking that would help me out. Turns out it only changes to easy on maps you haven't been to yet. So in order to continue, uh, I, can't, I can't do those quests. So in closing, uh, I'm going to go with this game is great. I love the storytelling. It's beautiful. Uh, but the difficulty for me is what's making it frustrating. I'm frustrated. And in order to get the most out of this game, I'm going to have to start over. Um, for me, I give it a solid one of two paws up. And uh, for Geo, you know, while I like the game for a few hours of gameplay, I'm concerned about the pace of the combat and the ability for the game to hold its immersion with all of the micromanagement, as we had mentioned before. Um, I really like games that progress and move forward. So uh, right now, I give it one paw up at this point, and I look forward to seeing how it's able to maintain itself as it continues. Uh, for me, Chrono, um, I really like the nostalgia. Uh, it's very similar to a lot of the other games that I've played. Um, and the storytelling, you know, really pulls me in for uh, Pillars of Eternity. However, I am also uh, concerned that it will not last like those other games, uh, i.e. Baldur's Gate or Baldur's Gate 2. Um, but I am thoroughly enjoying myself, and currently I give it a 2 of pause up. Wow. Wow. Ooh, wow. fancy. Yeah. So as you can see, we each have our wow. own interests in the game. And I uh, thank you guys so much for uh, joining us with our introduction to Pillars of Eternity. So with that, we want to go ahead and um, invite you guys to come check out our Twitch page. Uh, we've been putting together some live stream videos. Our YouTube channel is always um, updating every Monday and Friday with new videos. And well, we look forward to having you guys come and support us on our channel so that we can grow and continue to give you guys new footage. So without further ado, let's shamelessly plug in some videos on our Twitch account. Phoenix, why don't you start? What do you got for us? <laughs> so I play a lot of Minecraft with my friends. I bring in Gaia. Occasionally I bring in Krendel on YouTube. That's right. Um, I'm trying to get him to join us on the Twitch. Uh -huh. What you got? That'd be nice. Currently I'm streaming Hearthstone, and I will be starting to stream Pillars of Eternity, which will very quickly follow by uh, Pillars of Eternity 2. Coming out on the 8th? Yes, Pillars of Eternity 2 is coming out May 8th. So uh, keep your peepers open. Watch out for it. Uh, we look forward to uh, to continuing to play Pillars of Eternity. Geowater, I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, live stream a playthrough of Don't Starve, uh, one of my favorite survival games, as well as uh, Crono and I are playing a, an epic game of Civilization V. Check us out live on our Twitch accounts. And please feel free to uh, press that donate button to help us uh, continue our programming and keep these videos going for you. So thank you guys so much for watching Otter Fox Productions' review of Pillars of Eternity. Uh, we really wanted to focus on voice acting. Uh, definitely check out Critical Role, check out Geek and Sundry. What they're doing is an amazing uh, project, and it's helping bolster video gaming, role-playing, voice acting, and just storytelling in general. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye. See ya.